You may think there is only one event at Universal Orlando that is reaching a significant milestone this year. Halloween Horror Nights turns 30 this Halloween. However, you may be surprised to find out that Universal's annual event, Mardi Gras, is turning 25 this year and is just five years younger than the nation's staple Halloween event. Let's hope my feet don't fail me now and let's take a look at the history of Universal's family-friendly party event and what the 25th iteration of Mardi Gras has to offer. The wait is over. It's Mardi time at Universal Studios Mardi Gras 2000. First, let's take a look at what even is Mardi Gras. The name is French for Fat Tuesday and is known as a celebration period before the fasting season of Lent begins. You may also know it as its other names, such as Shrove Tuesday or Pancake Tuesday if you're from the UK especially. We make pancakes as it uses eggs, sugar and flour, traditionally all things not allowed to be used during Lent. The French named it Fat Tuesday as they usually used up all the fatty foods before Lent began. The date for Mardi Gras is always 47 days before Easter, so each year the day moves. These days, Mardi Gras is celebrated in a variety of different ways, most well known with a parade. Universal's Mardi Gras focuses on the New Orleans version of Mardi Gras. The first Mardi Gras parade is said to have taken place in New Orleans in 1837 and is a tradition that still occurs each year to this day. The Mardi Gras celebration in New Orleans has become world famous for its party atmosphere, parade floats, beads, costumes, and the colors green, purple, and gold. The parades in New Orleans are organized by social clubs known as crews. These crews can set the terms for membership and will design a new float each year that can be as elaborate as they like and may even feature celebrities. As the popularity of the event grew, some of the larger crews began outsourcing their float building to other companies. One of these companies was Kern Studios. Roy Kern built their first float for the New Orleans Mardi Gras back in 1932 and created Kern Studios in 1947. Since then, the company has become one of the premier float builders in the world and by the 1970s was creating over 300 floats each year for Mardi Gras. The company got so large that in 1984, they even opened up Mardi Gras World in New Orleans, which offered a behind the scenes look at the float building company featuring a tour of its giant warehouse. And this is where it's Mardi Gras every day. We've got tours that start off every morning at 9.30, run through the afternoon. You learn about the history of Mardi Gras, how it started here to become the largest cultural celebration in our country and one of the largest cultural celebrations in the world. As the popularity of Mardi Gras grew as a celebration of a fun party atmosphere, so did events around the world. Mardi Gras was even celebrated at Walt Disney World. Located at Downtown Disney was Pleasure Island, where since 1991, Mardi Gras was celebrated each year with music and fun. And even in 1996, a parade. Universal, after opening, had its annual Halloween event that was bringing guests in during the fall, but wanted something more for its slower season between February and April. Universal wanted to compete with Disney down the road with its Mardi Gras offerings and thought they could offer a less tame version of the event that would pull in guests with a more authentic offering. In 1996, Pleasure Island was due to host a four-day Mardi Gras event featuring a parade, music, and fun for the whole family. Universal, however, planned to top this by having a parade full of entertainers, costumes, and 15 floats all straight from New Orleans. This event would not be four days either. It would last for over a month. Starting on March 6th, 1996, was Universal's first Mardi Gras celebration night, running for one month until April 6th. Mardi Gras music would start playing within the park at 6 p.m and the parade would start at 7 p.m. The event would be included in the price of a park ticket and available to all annual pass holders. Back then, an annual pass was $69. The parade would feature floats, marching bands, 200 performers, and over 200 costume guests riding the floats, and of course, beads. Lots and lots of beads. The 15 floats used in the parade were created by none other 
than Kern Studios. Now, Blaine Kern, the son of Roy. Blaine said of the first Universal Mardi Gras parade that it would be a parade like no other, unless you are actually in New Orleans. Kern Studios have created each Mardi Gras float used at Universal Orlando since 1996. Ali Landry, newly crowned Miss USA, was the Mardi Gras queen on the first day of the event and sat atop the king and queen float. The parade was not the only thing on offer. The backlot area of the park would be transformed into a party with street cart vendors offering crawfish, jambalaya, and gumbo, as well as hurricane cocktails and Louisiana beer. The backlot area used to feature the production tour tram ride, which had just closed due to lack of actual filming going on at the studios. Local musicians would perform on weekdays, with nationally recognized bands performing on Saturday during the event. Some of these bands performing the first event included the Neville Brothers, Buckwheat Zedeco, George Farragut and the Destroyers, Del Amitri, Dead Eye Dick, and Ziggy Marley. The parade was so popular, it was extended through April 13th. The event had a much better effort on attendance than Universal had hoped, and rated it a 12 out of 10 on the scale of success. They would definitely be bringing it back the following year in 1997. Get ready to party, cause it's Mardi time at Universal Studios! Following the success of the first Mardi Gras parade, Universal also introduced a three times a night parade to Halloween Horror Nights in 1996. The Festival of the Dead Parade would feature five floats, one of which was used during Mardi Gras. They would even toss Halloween themed beads at spectators. Spooky. The Mardi Gras event was a success and continued to expand throughout the late 90s, with its number of days expanding and the caliber of bands attending growing. The year 2000 saw its fifth Mardi Gras celebration take place, with its longest 45 night event, running from February 18th to April 1st. The format remained the same, food, floats, and fun time, being the key behind its success and growth. 2002 would see the first major change to the parade floats. This year, there will be a slightly new theme to the parade celebrating all things American. The new patriotic theme was to celebrate the USA post 9-11 and invited service members to apply to throw beads from the floats. The next major change would come in 2005, when an all new 13 float parade was introduced. 2006 saw the biggest Mardi Gras ever, running from February 11th to April 22nd. Hall & Oates, Al Al Cool J, Earth, Wind & Fire, Kid Rock, and Gavin DeGraw all played the event. You could purchase an after 5 p.m. event ticket on the concert days if you did not want to pay full price for a day ticket or have an annual pass. A special program featured during the event bringing displaced bands from Hurricane Katrina down to Florida to help celebrate Louisiana music. The next biggest change came with the removal of the prop boneyard and the addition of the permanent concert stage in 2009. The Universal Music Plaza stage will be placed next to Rip Ride Rocket in Production Central and be able to hold crowds of roughly 8,000 guests. The parade would again feature new floats and new themes as the years continued. Four new floats were added in 2013 with a theme of colorful cultures around the world. Six new floats of mythical creatures in 2017. 2019 saw a theme of party animals with new floats themed after animals from the jungle, arctic, ocean, and swamps. The theme each year would change a few of the roughly 12 to 15 floats, but some of the classics would remain. The New Orleans music float, the king and queen float, and the massive gator float would all remain constant features of the parade. This leads us to this year's 25th anniversary in 2020 and a look at how the event has changed and how it gets bigger for this celebration. Who better to explain it than show director for Mardi Gras, Blake Braswell. So for the 25th celebration for Mardi Gras, when we first started, it was a very, it was a small celebration um, and, and it's really grown each year and it went from things for like a weekend to just a few days a week to now we do our Mardi Gras parade at 62 nights this year when it's all said and done. So the event itself is, has just grown by leaps and bounds and leaps and bounds. Uh, and so then that means as it's grown, we have had the ability to kind of put more and more into it as we go. Um, I've always enjoyed M Mardi Gras from year to year, but I, like, from year to year, I think the designs or the floats, the costumes, like you can, you can, you can lay out the photos. You can see it get better and better and better as, as we go. As we take a look at this year's event, here is what you can expect. Firstly, 
food. Lots of authentic food. Universal will be offering a plethora of food inspired from carnivals around the world. This year, at a location called the Carnival Around the Universe tent, they will be swapping out the food offerings every two weeks. Week one and two has offerings from Trinidad and Tobago. After trying all of the food options, these are some of the best of the whole event. Weeks three and four will have a Louisiana theme, followed by Brazil in weeks five and six, and finally Germany in week seven and eight. Along with the new food every two weeks, it will also come with new beer from each location. This really makes the Universal Mardi Gras Sampler a great option for those coming back to the event multiple times. There are a variety of Mardi Gras tasting lanyard options to choose from, starting at $30 plus tax. Among these options is an exclusive pass holder tasting lanyard, which includes 15 sample dishes for $60. Of course, other classics return, such as jambalaya, gumbo, po'boys, and gator bites, followed up, of course, with some king cake. The food offerings of Mardi Gras 2020 really are a step up from the past, and each delicious. The carnival around the universe tent, though, is definitely the standout. Inspired by Halloween Horror Nights, this year also sees the first Mardi Gras tribute store. So when we, in the merchandise division, we first started discussing what are we gonna do for Mardi Gras this year, it's the 25th year we knew we had to do something that was pretty big and pretty special. And um, thinking about what we've done in the past for other large events, the Tribute Store came to mind. And if you're familiar, the HHN Tribute Store uh, keeps growing every year for us, not only in size, but also in popularity. And we said, okay, 25th year Mardi Gras, we've got to do the Tribute Store. One room is themed around the Lafayette Cemetery in New Orleans, and the other a more traditional bayou. Inside is beautifully themed and it even smells like Halloween Horror Nights. Going inside is a must-see and look out for the store's creator's names with a French twist. The merchandise itself has really also improved this year with a variety of t-shirts and collectible cups, among much else. So some first uh, for them and us was, it's, well, in our creative development group at Universal, we really want to, I mean, we're storytellers, right? From, from Halloween Horror Nights, all the things we work on the holiday, things like Grinchmas, what have you. So can we add more of a story into this, um, which Kern had never done before, and, and so and we hadn't done with Mardi Gras, so with the Treasure of the Deep, the idea of the pirates said, well, it's a treasure map. We gotta have a treasure map. So let that be the first thing. And literally, like the float and the decorations on it will be a treasure map that marks you along to each thing that you're gonna encounter along the way. Like you'll see from your beginning point, there's like the sea creatures, there be monsters. And the next float you'll encounter will be the creatures of the deep. And the next one is a ruined like um, uh, underwater city. And the next one you'll encounter will be the sunken city of Atlanta. So each thing tells a story as you kind of go along this adventure. Each float is like it's got treasures that are themed to it. Like either they're gold or they're like green and emeralds, purple, that kind of thing. And as you kind of go along your way collecting stuff until you get stranded out on the shipwreck area. And then our next step is, well, if we've had all these pirates hunting gold, we should have them fight for the gold because that's what pirates do. They fight for the treasure. So we've got our battle for the booty float, which is still my favorite name. I can't believe it got approved. Yes. <laughs> the parade this year is the first to try to tell a story with its six new floats, themed to treasures of the deep. The beautifully designed floats are slotted into the center of the parade with the treasure map float, sunken Atlantis float, see, I did tell you last time we were going to Atlantis, along with the float aptly named Battle for the Booty, which has sword fighting pirates atop. Classic parade floats also look better than ever with an updated look. Riding the parade has never been easier, with Universal adding a virtual queue option rather than spending half your day sat waiting for the chance to get on making this a huge improvement. You can enjoy the rest of the park and check in when it's your time. For those of us who have sat in kids zone for hours waiting to get on, this is a huge improvement. Again, if the people that had first started working on it, I would never imagine that it would have been around for 25 years um, necessarily. Uh, this thing has become a little treasure, a little jewel, and so many people that work Mardi Gras, they look forward to it every single year because it's just a blast. I mean, you're you're literally out there having like a party with the guests, you know, and the performers are out there uh, with having dance parties prior to the parade with, with uh, our, our musicians that roam the street and having uh, all these these huge parties with the guests. Then you get the parade itself, and people are just going wild with the beads and stuff flowing. It's it's just a blast. Like I leave with a big smile on my face the whole time. Full of actors, live music with some huge performers each Saturday, great food, and one of the best parades anywhere. Mardi Gras 25 has taken the formula from previous years and really increased the fun once again.
with a wonderful team of team members making the experience even better. Universal's Mardi Gras 2020 makes it hard to leave the park without a huge smile on your face, along with many, many beads around your neck. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Universal Studios Florida. Make sure you subscribe to join the expedition and follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates from around the parks and more. Take a look at expeditionthemepark.com to get a closer look of some of the food offerings that will be available during the event. What are you looking forward to trying the most when you visit Mardi Gras? Let me know in the comments below and we will see you next time.